Hey folks, it's Damon. Today we're doing a follow up on the wife's gaming rig right there. Um, I just finished swapping out her RX 560 with the uh, 1080 hybrid that I got from EVGA. So the question is, is it still worth it to buy a GTX 1080 in June, almost July of 2018? Let's find out. Spec wise, it has eight gigabytes of GDDR5X, just like all other 1080s. Uh, it sports higher clocks, a dual BIOS, and the For The Win uh, PCB, which is known to be like overbuilt like crazy. It's super robust. So the upside is that if I wanted to do a custom water loop in this rig later on, all I have to do is get a water block for an EVGA 1080 For The Win, which is one of their most popular cards, uh, and I'm set. So this card features a 120 millimeter uh, all-in-one cooler as well as a uh, fan on the shroud blowing right down on the, on the VRMs to keep those nice and cool, which means we can overclock this card like crazy. After only about five minutes with MSI Afterburner, I got this card at plus 125 on the core and plus 1000 on the memory. So even after running the Heaven benchmark for an hour, the, the temperatures on the card only ever peaked at 48 degrees, which is awesome. Her old RX 560 saw temperatures higher than that and that thing didn't even need external power. As far as the benchmarks go, uh, I used her, her gaming rig here, which has a Ryzen 5 1600 uh, clocked at 3.9 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. It's got 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. What else? Oh, it has a 500 gig uh, 960 Evo uh, NVMe SSD. The CPU is being cooled by the uh, NZXT Kraken X62. So very beefy liquid cooler for the CPU. So her whole rig is not running really nice and quiet and cool. So going from the RX 560 to the GTX 1080, uh, I knew it was going to be a huge jump, but it, my mind was blown by the numbers that I saw before and then after the change. All of these benchmarks were ran twice each to try and keep our margin of error down. With the out of the box default settings on the 1080, we saw a three mark time spy graphic score of 7824. After the overclock though, that score jumped to 8528, which is a 9% improvement. Using the Ultra preset, base clocks in Shadow of Mordor pumped out an average frame rate of 168 with a 255 FPS max and a 93 FPS low. After the overclock, these frame rates jumped to 177 average with 273 FPS highs and 103 FPS lows, which is a 5.4% increase in the average FPS. With DaySex Mankind Divided, we saw an average of 78.1, a max of 94.1, and a min of 48.1 FPS using the stock speeds. After overclocking, we managed 79.6, a max of 101.0, and a min of 62.5, which is nearly 11% increase in the average frame rate and a 30% increase in the minimum frame rates. With nearly every setting absolutely maxed in Rainbow Six Siege, at stock speeds, the benchmarking tool showed us an average FPS of 46.2, with a max of 197.4, and a minimum of 14.1. After the overclock, these numbers rose to an average of 51.4 with a max of 205.6 and a minimum of 27.9, which is a 17% jump in the average FPS and a whopping 98% increase in the minimum frame rates. Last in our lineup is the Metro Last Light Redux Benchmark. At the stock clocks, we averaged 92.00 FPS with a max of 215.19 and a minimum of 9.72 FPS. After the overclock, those numbers rose to 101.67 average, 230.63 max, and 20.79 minimum F FPS. It seems that these cards really like to overclock, and it shows in the, in the performance gains in our benchmarking data. The memory clock slider was just maxed out, and the core was happy at over 2.15 GHz. Even after 3 hours of gaming and 6 hours of benchmarking, our temperatures never rose above 49 degrees Celsius. That's only 32 degrees Celsius over ambient temperatures. The card was installed with the radiator pulling air from the case through the radiator and expelling it out the back of the case by the motherboard's I.O. The front intake of the Meshify C is partially blocked by the Kraken X62 radiator, which is front mounted, which severely limits the amount of fresh air flowing into the case. Despite all that though, the card stays nice and cool and at idle sits around 31 degrees Celsius. So after going over all of the benchmarks and all of the gaming performance and everything, do I think it's worth it to buy a 1080 right now? In our current market, given that we may or may not see new cards come out from both from both uh, manufacturers soon, I think it depends. I think what it all boils down to is if you need a card right now, then buy one and get the best one that you can afford. If you don't, then wait. I don't think it makes sense to, to spend 200 bucks on a uh, entry-level card 
just to go around and spend more money, you know, six months down the line to buy a top tier card. Uh, I think you just threw away 200 bucks. You know what I mean? But I think, uh, I think a 1080 will last for, for a number of years. I, I had a 750 Ti in my rig that I ran for like four years, you know, so it's, it's definitely doable. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, hit like, if you disliked it, hit dislike. Make sure that you subscribe and check out some of my other content. I've got home theater PC builds. I've got uh, game talks where I talk about things like who is RA9 from Detroit Become Human, uh, Undertale, things like that. Um, I've been doing some Let's Plays. I just did one a couple nights ago of uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, of uh, Close Your Eyes, both the Steam version and the non-Steam version, uh, as well as a game called Marie's Room, which is kind of like Gone Home or Life is Strange. So if you like that content, check it out. Thanks for watching.